At the start of the season, I decided to try and target the Ironman 70.3 World Championships, which obviously was a massive undertaking. But recently, if you've been following along the journey, you'll have seen that I did manage to qualify for them. But I just wanted to go through in kind of like a three part sort of series in the YouTube channel, steps that I took, the pros and the cons, the kind of qualification process and what it would actually take to compete in the triathlon Ironman World Championships. So if you do want to follow along with that in the different parts, do hit subscribe so that you make sure that you are able to see when those videos are released. But it doesn't matter if you were a professional or an age group athlete, the qualification process and the pros and cons and things are exactly the same. So as I saw it, the pros of going to the Ironman World Championships were that it's a prestigious event. I wanted to go to it. It's something that most people would want to target if they are a competitive athlete that want to uh, compete at the highest level. So as a professional, that was my target at the start of the season. I wanted to compete at the top against the best in the world. Which brings me on to the second pro, it's on a global stage, so it's giving me a bit of exposure, potentially leading on into sponsorship, and also, again, competing against the best in the world. Not only that, it was a massive inspiration and motivational goal for me. I knew it was going to be a stretch goal, I knew it was going to be really tough to actually execute and get the qualification. But it was something that I think you, me, most people in the triathlon circles can relate to. They know that Kona is the prestigious event or the Ironman World Championships is something that is really prestigious and inspirational, motivational to actually get to. So that really motivated me to want to go. And yes, it's sort of for entire in terms of like, if I can get to the World Championships, it's showing that if I can do it, you can do it too. I can coach those athletes to be the same sort of level for their age group but not just that it's really important to me that I can prove to myself that I can compete with these people that I can be on the big stage I can actually like put it to them like try and stick in there so yeah like I think that was a massive measuring stick a yardstick for me to try and like aim towards. Again, if you can relate to any of this and you want to follow on in parts two and three, do hit subscribe, do hit that like button and you'll be notified on when I next release a video. The last pro, which does relate more to professionals than it does age group athletes, is that it can give you quite a lot of PTO points. So I would move up the world rankings if I do quite well in the event. There's obviously decent prize money, there's a high competitive field, all that goes towards having a high PTO points and ranking. So that could then bump me up into different races and or just into the higher tiers of the world rankings. So yeah, more specific to professionals, but still a massive pro for me. The cons of this, I was starting to feel the burden of um, as I went to try and get this qualification. So first, it's intensely competitive. Like obviously there's so many people trying to go for this uh, qualification and everyone wants the same thing. And everyone's at not a similar level, but a very high level. So it is really tough to get this qualification and it costs a lot of time, commitment and money. So I think that because of all of this, I was starting to feel that burden. I was starting to kind of, I don't know, uh, think that I was making the wrong decision in chasing this because it wasn't really, Become, well, it was starting to become evident that it would be more of a task than I thought it was going to be. I knew it was going to be tough and it would be a bit of a stretch goal, but this was starting to become something that I didn't see myself actually achieve. And on that, the time and commitment take, it takes, not only just to train for this and like get to the level that's necessary to be able to qualify, it's the time and commitment away, like going and traveling to these races and spending time away from family and friends spending time traveling. Um, so like a lot of this time and commitment is taken up with just going to the races in order to try and qualify because Ironman doesn't do events everywhere all the time. It's a case of it, it does certain events in certain locations at certain times of the year. So I was having to go to here, there and everywhere, which don't get me wrong, amazing locations, but I had to sort of go to most of them in order to try and get that qualification because I didn't know 
what the fields were going to be like, uh, whether they're going to be strong, weak, whether the courses were going to suit me. I've had to find that out because it is my first year trying to do long course racing. So it doesn't matter if it's you, me, or an amateur, you have to be like, put yourself on the start line. You have to constantly put yourself on the start line in order to try and achieve this qualification. And lastly, the financial considerations are huge. And I'm really struggling financially because I've had to go to these races to try and qualify. And you could say, oh, you should have been more specific with which events you target and you should have just done Staffordshire because it's a UK based event. And why would you spend money going here, there and everywhere? I might not have got the qualification standard in Staffordshire had I not done the previous races. I could have got it in the other races, but I learned a lot in those races, which I was then able to put to the test and like correct in Staffordshire, which allowed me to get the qualification standard. So you can't say, oh yeah, you should have saved your money, spent it more wisely, this, that, and the other. I've spent it as kind of wisely as I could have done in order to try and achieve that goal. And like the people who have more money can go to more events or events further afield. So maybe in America where the fields aren't as tough in theory, open to debate, let me know in the comments below. Um, they can go to different events here, there and everywhere to try and qualify. Obviously it's not a good idea to just do everything and keep towing the line because then you don't have enough time for training. But in general, being able to be more selective with those races is far more beneficial and to be more selective you have to have more money and I don't have that so yeah it's cost a lot of money to go to all of these races Staffordshire was the cheapest but yeah it, it was it was just one of these things like if you want to be a professional and or an age grouper that has to chance their arm at a few different events then yeah it's just it's just part part of the game part of the process unfortunately I do have a few sponsors but again only enough to get by and that's why I coach entire that's why I teach etc etc so yeah it, it's one of those I'm doing what I can as like a kind of semi-pro or a, a, a professional in order to achieve those goals but yeah anyway if you want to watch part two which will be about the qualification process and how I went about that do hit that subscribe button hit that like button and it won't be long